Hi, I'm Chad and welcome back to The Lemon Factor. Today we're going to take a look at aftermarket exhaust for the ND Miata. We have our project car behind me here. This is a 2019 RF in Grand Touring and hopefully in the near future we're going to add an aftermarket exhaust to this car. While I think the stock exhaust sounds pretty good, I do think there's room for improvement. So when it comes to exhaust, there's three major areas we're going to take a look at. One, performance gains. Two, the look. And three, the sound. And we're going, to, we're going to take a look at the major manufacturers of exhaust for the Mazda Miata. Not all of them. There's a whole bunch of exhaust manufacturers to choose from, which is great for Miata owners. I'm going to touch on a handful of them and I'm going to go through how I would approach making a, a purchase decision. And even if your exhaust is not on the list, uh, this would be helpful for you in thinking about things to consider when you're ready to make your next purchase. Don't forget to subscribe to The Lemon Factor. When you subscribe, you'll have access to videos on two of our project cars. One, this 2019 Mazda Miata RF Grand Touring. The second is a 2019 Honda Accord 2.0 Touring. In addition to our two project cars, we also provide reviews on new vehicles as well as car products. We're going to take a look at some of the details for each one of these exhausts. Like I said, we're not going to go into every exhaust that is out there for the ND Miata. I did select some of the more common exhausts. We're going to focus on the Goodwin Racing, the Flying Miata, the Cobalt, the Gretti, the HKS, and the Borla. They seem to be the most common, the most popular. And just to clarify, when we go over these exhausts, we are looking at the muffler section, the axle back exhaust, not to be confused with the cat back. Uh, so for those of you new to this, exhaust gases exit the engine block through the exhaust manifold, also known as the header. And they typically then run their way into a catalytic converter to clean the gases. They'll go through a resonator of various size or there might be more resonator to help cut down on some of the high frequencies or different frequencies that the car manufacturers are wanting to omit. And then it goes into a muffler to further cut down on sound before exiting through the tailpipe itself. And technically speaking, if you were to replace your entire exhaust, it could start from the manifold slash header into the catalytic converter into what this, the next section is, is sometimes referred to as midpipe and then into the muffler portion. And as we review these exhausts today, we're just talking about the portion that is the axle back, the um, technically the muffler. There are systems out there that are cat back systems. I'm not going to get into those, but I bring that up just to make sure that we're clear and what we're what we're reviewing so that when it comes to me identifying some of the pricing, you know it's for the axle back. But also, it's important to note that if you're in the market for an exhaust and you're only, you only care about the uh, axle back, then fine, there's a lot of choices out there. But if at some point, whether you're doing it, doing so immediately or upgrading in the future, if you're looking at adding a mid pipe or a header, some of these manufacturers do not offer that. You may find it difficult to find a matching mid-pipe catalytic converter and header. So just bear that in mind. So why don't we dive into it? Let's take a look at the first one. We're going to go through the Goodwin Racing uh, first and we'll start at their web page. So I'm going to go to all the manufacturers web pages, give you a little bit of information. I have link provided links in the description below, so you'll be able to access that as well. I'm also putting a lot of this information into a table that you'll see coming up here. And if you want access to that simple spreadsheet, send me a comment below and I'll be happy to share that with you. So let's ju jump into this. So good win racing, uh, very popular when it comes to Miata. Thus, one of the reasons why I put it at the top of the list, along with Fly and Miata, the two of them are some of the more well-known uh, Miata parts manufacturers. The first Goodwin Racing exhaust. 
and that is the Roadster Sport Super Q Stainless Steel Premium Adjustable Sound MX-5 Miata Exhaust. It's a mouthful. Bottom line is, so there's three exhausts from Goodwin Racing, and this one is the first one, the Super Q. Super Q, as you can see here, the Q is for a quiet version. Now, that's a little misnomer because it's not going to be quiet. It will be louder than your stock exhaust, which already I think is not bad. It's pretty good. But when it comes to their three exhaust offerings, this is the less loud or the most quiet version of that. And all of the uh, Goodwin Racing exhausts come in stainless steel. And all of the Goodwin Racing exhausts actually have with it the option to get the mid pipe and headers. However, there is a recommendation for one of them that uh, not to be used with a header, and I'll get into that. That's the higher version of the race. So when it comes specific to the Super Q, there is a mid pipe offered. Uh, it does come stainless steel. The exhaust tip for this version, as you can see here, is three and a half inches. It's comparable to the stock exhaust as far as weight. And according to their website, it adds three horsepower um, or three foot pounds of to torque. So as you can see here, uh, the Super Q, Goodwin Racing does a really good job of writing up uh, details on their exhaust. So you have information about the exhaust itself, a little bit of information about how it sounds, what to expect, some nice pictures so you can see the tips of the exhaust. It does come with a lifetime warranty. It is, all of these will technically be missions legal because it's not messing around with the catalytic converter. However, there are state specific laws regarding sound and a lot of the websites do not quote uh, decibels. So just keep that in mind that if you're buying an exhaust, it may exceed your local regulations, rules around not to exceed a certain decibel. In addition to that, there's also tracks out there that on track day, um, like Laguna Seca and some of the others, that when you show up, you have to you you have to meet a certain sound regulation and come in under. So keep that in mind if you're to happen to plan on uh, using your vehicle at a track. You might want to give the track a call to see if there's so some sound uh, regulations uh, before you purchase an exhaust. And for that matter, if you purchase an axle back and then add a mid pipe, add a larger higher flowing catalytic converter and possibly a header, it's just going to get louder. So keep all of that in mind, especially if you're one to then to do these in stages, the purchases, it's not gonna get quieter, it's gonna get louder, uh, which for some of you might be fine, it might be okay. But I just wanna make sure that, again, on the lemon factor here, we just wanna make sure you don't make a purchase that you regret and you feel like you have a lemon. So keep sound uh, into consideration as far as what your local laws are and what you're gonna do with the, the vehicle itself. But back to the Goodwin Racing, there's some nice pictures on the website. On Goodwin's website, it does have for the Q a reference to a dyno chart in which it identifies uh, anywhere, anywhere between three to five uh, horsepower, three to five foot-pounds of torque. And that overall, I think, is what would be expected from any of these axle-back exhausts in the same di inner diameter uh, size piping, meaning this one is two and a half inches. You probably should expect three to, you know, three to maybe five horsepower and foot-pounds of torque, probably less torque. And most of that, when you do an exhaust, will be felt at the high end, where pressures as you rev the engine and you're in the higher gears, uh, the exhaust gas pressures are really trying to push their way out and freeing that restriction up by putting in place a larger diameter exhaust will help. But you only notice that uh, in the higher RPM. So all of these will probably, uh, you'll see more around the 4,000 and higher RPM that will gain the three to five horsepower, three to five foot pounds of torque. And down low in the RPMs, you're probably not gonna notice much. Uh, and sometimes, I'm not saying specific to the Miata, sometimes you actually find some horsepower loss. On the website, it does have uh, various YouTube links. And if you're to go out into YouTube yourself and do a search on the Super Q uh, exhaust by 
Goodwin Racing, you'll find a lot of videos. The next exhaust, the Goodwin Racing Roadster Sport Super Street is our middle road. So you have the Super Q as the quieter, you have the race as the most rambunctious, and the Super Street is somewhere in the middle. And I would say the Super Street, from the reviews I've read, from the forums that I've read, from the YouTube, you know, it does seem like it's a, a good middle of the road exhaust. There's, uh, it's made of stainless steel, uh, just like all of the Goodwin Racing exhausts. It does use the Hemmelt's chamber design, um, which cuts down on certain frequencies. This version, the Super Street, actually reduces the weight to under 14 pounds. I think it's 13.9 pounds for this exhaust, which is a big difference considering the stock exhaust, depending on ND1 or ND2, it's 21, 22 pounds. So you're going from 21, 22 pounds to 14 pounds. So that's pretty good. And in this version, uh, there apparently there was an, a higher horsepower gain from a review conducted, and you can read that review uh, of their Super Street uh, muffler on their website here. So that's interesting. I do like to see that quote. And again, it's just a quote. It's one vehicle, but it's nice to see a little bit of information backing up the horsepower gains. I think these exhausts look great. The stainless steel looks good. I think the angle tips with the roll tips on both the Super Q and the Super Street is really nice. And again, just going back to the Goodwin Racing website, there's a lot of good information here. They, they're not just posting a picture and a price and order it. You know, they have some nice pictures so you can see what it looks like. Again, eh, there it is, the 13.9 pounds, so you save weight with this version. To me, I like that stainless steel rolled tip. This is a single tip exhaust, not a dual tip exhaust that you'll find on the stock Miata. However, Goodwin does offer a dual tip if you wanna stay with that. So I'm not putting those in the charts, but know that there are dual tip versions of these Goodwin Racing exhausts. Uh, offer that you can purchase. It's up to you what you're looking for as far as uh, sound. And sound simply isn't just as, you know, how loud it is. It's important what sound is coming out of it, what tone, what character. Is it bassy? Is it a high-pitched noise? These are the sound waves that come off the engine and every engine produces a unique pulse coming out of it. And what an exhaust does with the resonator, with the muffler is, it's counteracting some of those sound waves to reduce certain frequencies. And actually, Goodwin Racing does a pretty good job of explaining that with their, um, in regards to the Helmholtz uh, chamber design. So take a read uh, from that. But bottom line is, what I like about Goodwin Racing is that they offer these, the option to purchase a baffle insert. And the baffle insert can help reduce or change the tone. So I like that flexibility that they offer, that if you buy it and, hmm, wow, it's too loud, or if it's not loud enough, you can remove the, the baffle, or you can put a baffle in. And with the dual tip design, you have much more flexibility because you have two tips where you can fine tune the characteristics of the sound to your liking. So let's move on. The next and final for Goodwin Racing is their Roadster Sport Race. This one is definitely their loudest, their least restrictive. It does come in even louder than the Super Street at 11 pounds, so saving even more weight. It does have the same stainless steel design. However, it does not have a rolled tip. It's the straight uh, piping uh, exit and it does come at a slight angle. Uh, so this is the least restrictive, probably offering a little bit more gains when it comes to performance. But again, all of these look great, have a lifetime warranty. As far as the pricing, uh, I'm putting it in the chart, but I'll just go back here. The Super Q is currently priced at 500, and I'm rounding the numbers. The prices I'll give you are what I found doing a quick search on a couple handful of sites, so it's not necessarily the OEM uh, manufacturer's site, and maybe they're offering specials at the time, but the pricing is all shipping included. And for the Goodwin Racing uh, Super Q, currently selling at $500, the Super Street version is 480, and then the race version is 370. And if you add a dual tip, that's gonna be extra, and then if you want to uh, add the baffles, you'd have to purchase those, and I think those were $39, $40. I like Goodwin, got the lifetime warranty, the pricing seems uh, reasonable as compared to all the others. 
You do have uh, gains when it comes to horsepower and torque, not a lot, but I think we'll be on par with all the others. And then you also save some weight uh, when you move to their Super Street and their race version. And then again, it is a two and a half diameter pipe. Uh, most all of these are two and a half diameter. I think that's reasonable for the Miata. I think anything larger, you better be turbocharged, running high boost uh, to have a real need for anything more than two and a half inch uh, exhaust. Going on to the Fly Miata website, the Hushomatic exhaust is also pretty popular. Uh, it sells for $739, so definitely more expensive than the Goodwood Racing. Their exhaust offers the dual tip, which the with uh, rolled tips and stainless steel. It does have the in, etched engraving, flying Miata. There's some nice pictures uh, on their website of this. System itself looks really nice. What I like about this and what most, most people I think like about this exhaust is the hush-o-matic flexibility, the ability to have this exhaust be loud when you want it and quieter when you don't want it to be loud. So they have the they have it built in a valve, a butterfly valve in the exhaust that you can hook it up to vacuum. And when there's a, a high amount of load or when you're revving higher in the RPMs and you're really stepping on it, it will open that valve up and give a freer flow, which also will give you a, a louder exhaust note. But when you're not on the gas, when you're not giving it a lot and you're lower in the RPMs, that will close and that will tone it down a little bit. So it adds that flexibility. And you can either have that offer, Fly and Miata offers that either mechanically, so you don't have to do anything, but they also offer the ability to add to, to the exhaust a CAN integration kit. So it's, it's a stock mounted um, device that for $179 will give you the ability to either turn it on all the time or turn it off, meaning you can have it open all the time or close all the time. It's, it's nice that they offer that. I will note though at 739, it's kind of on the high side. And then if you uh, want that in integration into the, the stock, it is $179 to add to that. Miami Miata does offer a mid pipe. So if you're looking to build this one out, they do have that. You can integrate that into the entire system, which is nice. And again, Goodwin Racing has that too. One thing, just going back to the Goodwin Racing that I forgot to mention, you'll see it on their website if you look at the race version. The race version, they have noted as it's not designed for use with a header or a mid pipe. So if you're strictly looking to get this muffler axle back, and you then fine, you're all set. But if you're looking to get an an axle back exhaust today and potentially build it out to a mid pipe and a header in the future. Goodwin Racing does not recommend you go with the race. They recommend one of the other two, either the Super Street or the Super Q uh, to build that in. So keep that in mind. Going back to the Fly and Miata Hushomatic, one thing I did, I had several questions for the manufacturers while I was putting this together and I emailed most all of them with a couple questions I had. And all of them got back to me within in less than 12 hours, which was great, except Fly Miata. What I was trying to find out from them is, is their system full stainless steel and what type? I didn't get an answer for that. Uh, also was trying to find out what pipe diameter they use. A lot of the others are two and a half inches, could not confirm with them. And then I was also looking to find out what the weight is for the Fly Miata. Uh, Hushomatic, and I'm sure that's out there and some of you that might even have it. And if you do, and you know that, please post it, you know, below, put it, put it in the comments so that others watching this will have that bit of information. Moving to the next exhaust, we have the Cobalt Stainless Steel Dual Tip. And here's some pictures of them. Uh, I don't know, I could not find if there was a mid pipe uh, or, and or header offered or if it was compatible with others. So. Uh, keep that in mind, again, as you look to potentially build out your system. Uh, I'm not sure what's offered. On the website, it does say that this is partial stainless steel. So the price of this system is $315, so definitely cheaper than some of the others. And I'm going to guess that the fact that it's not full, full stainless steel has a lot to do with that. In comparison to the Goodwin Racing and the Fly Miata, the Cobalt Stainless Steel Dual Tip only comes with five-year warranty. Is that super important? To me, the warranties themselves, yes and no. The thing is, even with the lifetime warranties, if you have a warranty repair, chances are 
and I haven't looked into this, you're going to have to ship it to them to have it fixed. And they're probably not paying for the shipping. So you're going to have to probably ship it to them and back. And for the cost of shipping alone, if it's a weld that gave, you know what, you're probably better off having a local shop uh, fix the weld and it would be less than the cost that it, it would be to actually ship it to them. So warranties, while they're good and hopefully gives an indication of confidence in their product when it comes to an exhaust, I don't know how they're going to fulfill a fix. I can't imagine that they would just simply ship you a new one, but maybe they, maybe they would. But I say that because Cobalt is at five years compared to the Goodwin and the Fly and Miata uh, at a lifetime warranty. And the Cobalt is a two and a half inch, uh, does have a two and a half inch pipe dia diameter. It doesn't quote the weight. And again, like the Fly and Miata Hushomatic, if you know how much, if you have this or, and or you know how much it weighs, if you could post it in the comment section below, uh, that would be helpful for others. This Cobalt comes in a 2.75 inch dual tip. So it does look pretty good. I think if you're really looking for a low cost option, not bad. I mean, I, I would I would consider this Cobalt. This, this really looks like a, a good option. And when it comes to a five year warranty, if you think about it this way, the cost of two Cobalts would be the cost of a Flying Miata hush o -matics. So you even have, you know, if it happened to go, you're still spending less and buying two Cobalts than you would for a Flying Miata. And I'm not saying one is better than the other, but I, what I am trying to get across is that, yes, you may have a shorter warranty, and yes, it may not be full stainless steel, but you know what? You're not paying an arm and a leg for it. They've adjusted the pricing accordingly. So I think that's a, a good budget buy. But let's take a look at the Gretti Supreme SP. This is the axle back exhaust system. And this is a dual tip stainless steel. The dual tip is 3.25 inches. So it's pretty good size, especially for dual tips. And then uh, the piping, the diameter of the pipe at two and a half inches, which again, most of these are. What I do like about this Gretti is that they do have a full catback system uh, available. Uh, so if you're looking to jump into that, uh, there is definitely one available. It is two and a half inches, which is the same as uh, all of the others I've mentioned, although we're not 100% sure on the Fly Miata exhaust, but so far all the other exhausts are two and a half inches. Don't have the weight, uh, didn't put it on the website. And then Gretti uh, does identify two to four horsepower gain for the axle back. Gretti does have a limited lifetime warranty uh, and the price for the Gretti is on the relatively higher side at $660. However, one thing to note in a lot of the forums, people seem to be pretty happy with this, uh, with the sound of the Gretti. The HKS Lega Max Premium Roadster HKS does not offer a mid pipe or a header for this. So this would be one that if you're considering, uh, should only consider it if you're looking for the axle back, which is what it is. It is a dual tip, full T304 stainless steel. It is, let me just scroll back up here, at a weight of 13 pounds. So there's definitely a weight savings compared to the stock. Um, when it comes to the warranty itself, uh, they were very quick to get back to to me, the HKS does have a one-year warranty. So on the low side of a warranty, and that was embedded within their website. So not a easily reference to me. I think they should reference it on the product page. This one was, I didn't find it a lot of places. I found it between $510 to $700. And I know that's a pretty broad range, but some of the sites I wasn't familiar with that I found it on, and I don't know how legit they were. So I'm just gonna say between the $500 to $700 uh, range. And if you look at the website, it looks like it's less than two and a half inches for a pipe diameter. So that is one that you keep that into consideration that at two inches or a little bit more than two inches, it is not a as high, free flowing as some of the other exhausts we've already mentioned. Uh, the tips are three inches dual tip, which is nice. I would be a little leery of the HKS just because of the pipe diameter. Part of, you know, one of the three reasons why you're looking at exhausts are either you want it louder or sound better. You want to have some performance or you want it to look good. And from a performance standpoint, and it will also somewhat impact the sound. I think the smaller diameter piping for the HKS uh, should be taken into consideration. 
And then lastly, the Borla S-Type. So let's take a look at the Borla website. We have the Borla S-Type, which is the axle back exhaust. This, along with the HKS, is not two and a half inches. This is 2.25 inches, as you can see here. It does have a dual exhaust tip. The tip size is two and a half, so both the tips themselves, as well as the exhaust pipe di diameter, is on the relatively smaller end. However, what's interesting is the sound clips that I've heard, the Borla sounds pretty good. And if you're looking for an aftermarket exhaust that has some good sound, this is a full stainless steel, not too loud. This might be one that you should potentially consider. If you want to upgrade to a mid pipe, they do offer a mid pipe, which is nice. There is a weight savings compared to the stock. Again, the stock is 21 to 22 pounds, and this Borla is quoted at 16.3 pounds, so you save some weight. When it comes to the cost, it's $595, but it does come with a million mile warranty. Round it to 600, it's a little less than the Gretti. It's probably more in line with the HKS. It is not the most expensive, but it's towards the higher end. As I mentioned, there's a whole bunch of other ones out there, like Magnaflow Street Series. That's a full cat back system. There's an NVIDIA Q300, NVIDIA N100. There's Remus, there's Apexi. There's a whole bunch of them. Consider if you're just looking at upgrading your axle back or if you're ultimately would like to do a mid pipe and a header, because that will uh, limit what options are out there for, for you. So consider your long-term plan for the exhaust. Next, consider your usage. If you are planning to go forced induction, whether that is a turbo or a supercharger, definitely consider getting at least a two and a half inch uh, piping diameter. You know what, at some point I'm gonna get one of these and ideally I'm gonna you know put it on a dyno and see what type of horsepower gains we can get. If you wanna see that, let me know, subscribe. Turn on the notifications so that you find out what exhaust I purchased. Turn on the notifications and subscribe so that when I do um, do my baseline dyno run and when I do buy the exhaust, put it on and, and uh, go to the dyno for it, you can be notified. You can see how much horsepower. Uh, so definitely don't forget to subscribe, like and share uh, this video. I digress. Let's just quickly go back. So when you're considering the exhaust, consider the... Uh, long-term uh, approach, consider the material it's made out of, look for the full stainless steel, look at the piping diameter, you want a free-flowing exhaust. Obviously, the cost is a factor for many of you, uh, maybe not all of you, but many of you. And then the, the look, you know, a lot of these are offered with, some have the dual tips, the tips themselves can either be a rolled stainless steel at the end or straight through design. Uh, they have different sizes. What you can't do and the hardest part is really get a good sense of how it sounds. Everybody has their own unique preference when it comes to both loudness level and the tone of the exhaust, whether it's bassy or not, and what they like and what they don't like. And yes, you can go to YouTube and you can listen to as many clips as you can, but I caution you on that too because the placement of the microphone, the volume setting of the microphone, how they set it up before they uploaded it. Best thing you can do is, if possible, go to a, an event, whether that is an autocross, whether that is a Miata club, um, a racing event. See if there's people there that have these exhausts and listen to them yourself. Make sure you understand what their setup is, but listen to them yourself. That would be great. On the forums out there, you can go to your region, there's usually regional sections, and see if you can hook up with someone that has an exhaust you're considering just to take a ride with it. I've already found that people are more than willing uh, to say, hey, come over, take a look at it. They share your interest and your passion for the vehicles, and they wanna, you know, they definitely wanna help. So if you can, definitely do that because sound is very subjective, and I wanna make sure that you're getting the right exhaust for you. So as always, uh, thank you for viewing this. I hope this was helpful. Here at The Lemon Factor, we want to make sure that you're purchasing what's right for you and that you do not have buyer's remorse. You do not feel as though you've got a lemon. And we have two project cars. Obviously, we have this Mazda Miata, the 2019 Mazda Miata RF in Grand Touring. We also have a 2019 Honda Accord 2.0 Touring 
and then periodically we'll do car reviews and car product reviews. With this, I wanna hear from you. Tell me which one of these exhausts you think I should put on the Miata, Mazda Miata. Tell me, and tell me why. Or do you think it looks good? Do you think it will add the most horsepower? Do you think it sounds the best? I want your feedback. Before I buy one, I wanna hear from all of you. If you have experience with one of these exhausts, whether you have it on your vehicle or you've heard it on someone else's, I'd love to hear from you. I think others would like to hear your comments. Post your comments below. Let us know what you think, whether they're overpriced, good quality, high performance, sound good, look good. Uh, I want that feedback. Uh, so please, you know, note it below. So as always, thank you for joining the Lemon Factor, and I hope this was helpful, and I will talk to you soon. Oh, before I go, uh, within the next week, I am getting some Flying Miata LED corner lights and side lights. Uh, and I will then do a video to install those and give you my review on those LEDs. I got the smoke version. I think that'll go well with the machine gray Miata. And if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe, turn on the notifications because hopefully that'll come up uh, within the next week uh, or so I'll have that uh, up. So um, looking forward to talking to you guys soon. Take care.